Maroon 5, The Adam Levine Experience, that guy from The Voice that I think has a band? These are just a few of the aliases that you might know them by, but they are indeed Maroon 5. They were originally known in the 90s as Karis Flowers, and they put out a great record under that name. Then they transitioned over to Maroon 5, put out a pop rock classic in the terms of mainstream music in 2002 with songs about Jane, with some songs on there that definitely went down as legendary pop songs. It won't be soon before long, and songs about Jane were favorites of mine throughout my teenage years, often dominating my life with some of those singles in particular like Wake Up Call and She Will Be Loved being songs that I continuously came back to and loved. But what happened to this band? What exactly fell apart and what went wrong? Well, here we are today. My name's John, you're watching Beyond ARTV, and here we are at Problems I Have with Maroon 5. The band had humble enough beginnings, everybody from Jesse Carmichael, Mickey Madden, and Adam Levine making their way over from Kara's Flowers after that debut album kind of flopped and they had record label trouble. Yeah, they changed the name to Maroon 5 and they stayed intact as a band, just changed the name and obviously changed the output of the music, where they were originally kind of a throwback to some 70s, 80s funk, a little bit of a groove and psychedelia mixed with pop rock. It was nice on their debut album as Kara's Flowers. And even on songs about Jane, they found a totally different vibe that was sellable in terms of being commercially viable, but it wasn't so awful and full of itself that it was just a vapid mess. So here we are, 2017, 15 years after their breakthrough. What happened to Maroon 5? Well, the first problem that I have with them is the fact that they clearly are talented. They are clearly good songwriters. In fact, Jesse Carmichael and obviously Adam Levine wrote some damn great pop songs early in this century. And now you're expecting us to believe that the best you've got is moments like Sugar, Animals, and some of the recent songs like Don't Wanna Know, Cold, and... Ooh, some of the new ones on Red Pill Blues, their album that just dropped. I don't want to even talk about those. It's clear that this band was so focused on making money that they forgot about who they were and didn't care about who they were in the process. Those first two albums as Maroon 5 performed fantastically for them, and why would they continue to not just channel more of that? Who cares if maybe you're not as popular? They were still having number one hits like Makes Me Wonder from this very album. How are you not seeing that as success? Well, whenever Hands All Over landed in 2010, they weren't exactly all that happy with the chart success. And as Adam Levine himself said, uh, I'm not happy unless I'm the center of attention. I have to have attention. He quite literally said that. And obviously the band didn't see the numbers first week that they wanted to, so they decided to mix things up. In fact, they almost broke up, talked about breaking up. Adam said that he wouldn't want the band to go past a certain age, and here we are. Maroon 5 are still intact, and they sound nothing like a band. In fact, how do they manage to have now seven official members in the band, yet they sound way less than what they did whenever they were actually playing pop rock music? It doesn't make sense at all. It sounds like a producer and Adam Levine. You can call this problems I have with Adam Levine as well if you want because a lot of my problems don't necessarily lie with the instrumentalists of this band but at the same time you're sitting there you're cashing a paycheck and on these new songs like don't want to know what exactly are you doing are you playing a couple of notes here and there on the guitar is there any real bass in that track what is Mickey Madden doing what is PJ Morton doing what are these guys doing I mean I guess the keyboards some of the production pressing loops whenever you play a live show and in the studio they're barely noticeable on the track, so it just seems like a bunch of people coming together calling themselves a band for the sake of having the Maroon 5 name, but that just seems like if Adam really wanted more money, then he would just do it himself and kick everybody else out or else go solo. So I'm not exactly sure. I'm kind of confused by Maroon 5 at this point. It started going downhill for Maroon 5 in 2010. On Hands All Over, they had a couple of co-writers and it was noticeable. Never Want to Leave This Bed, other tracks like even Misery started to lack a little bit of that personality and punch and they were starting to sound a little bit recycled and formulaic at that point. But still, it was I wasn't awful, I wasn't all over their asses at the time saying, make better music or do something different. It wasn't done so horribly so like V and Red Pill Blues and some of the other standalone singles that came out, 
but still, you could tell that this band was starting to become watered down, and if you look at the production credits on that album, it was a little bit all over the place, considering it went from Benny Blanco to Stargate to themselves trying to produce a few of the tracks. It came out as a muddled mess, and Payphone being the lead single from that project, it had me very worried as somebody who had previously been a somewhat big fan of Maroon 5. It's a track that has a rap for no reason other than the fact that, hey, let's get a feature on this. And it was around that point and obviously the song that rejuvenated the band with Christina Aguilera, Moves Like Jagger, that they really just started to become whores for just having feature. They wanted feature after feature after feature. And now, at this point, I'm questioning at this day and age in 2017, 2018 probably even, can they put out a single that doesn't have somebody on it? Cold featuring Future. Don't want to know featuring Kendrick Lamar. Their new track with Julia Michaels, Help Me Out. And then the track with SZA, you know? What are they going to do if they don't have guests on the songs? It's like they don't think that they are commercially viable enough on their own as the Maroon 5 brand and band. And they're like, we have to get somebody else on here you know it's not gonna sell well we're not gonna get number one or we're not gonna get a top 20 and Adam like I said really seems to care about those numbers so he's doing whatever it takes as many co-writers as it takes even though it makes them sound like a cheap imitation of their own band recycle whatever it takes in terms of the production and grab every guest you can buckle up because it's the Adam Levine experience and it's Maroon 5 at this point and it's nothing new I've been wanting to make this video for a while but I held off until they had a new record out there in the world because I was like, I'm not going to judge the book by its cover. I'm going to actually hear this thing. And if you want to see my review of that, it will be linked at the end of this video. But the record, once again, unsurprisingly, it's not phasing me, was awful. Most of it. There were a few good songs, including some of the singles that did have featured guests, and that's fine. But at the same time, I think that they don't trust in themselves and they are just doing whatever is trendy. They're following trends, they're hopping to whatever makes them commercially successful, and they are willing to do whatever it takes to just not even really be a band and just be there. They have the name, they're popular. If Adam Levine went solo at this point, it would just look weird because a guy in his late 30s who has an opinion on everything, including the VMAs, I mean, he hated that, right? He was mad that Lord got to sing her song even though she didn't actually sing. She had the fucking flu and you called her out for that, but your old buddy, old pal, Julia Michaels, which we now know why you're defending her because obviously she co-wrote your songs for you instead uh, probably wrote the majority of them and obviously featured on Help Me Out. That's your girl, you say. Well, what about Lord? She's out there giving it her all and she's just trying to perform with the flu even at the v MTV VMAs. But, you know, the second Julia Michaels gets cut off a little bit early, you know, it's the end of the world. Best new artist, I know, but it just, it happens. And you're outraged about that? Are you outraged about the fact that Chester Bennington's tribute got cut off early? You know, they went to commercial break during that. Where's the outrage there, Adam? Oh, it's only shit because you care about the people that can make moves to make you more successful, make Maroon 5 more successful, and it's sad that this is what it has come to. The band themselves rarely get writing credits on the album, and I find that disturbing. The past three releases especially, it's rare that you see a Madden credit or a Valentine credit. And for a while there, now, no, I have an actually went on hiatus and I didn't think he was going to rejoin the band but there he is back and touring again and I guess he missed the money I don't know what else it could be at this point I don't know how fun it could be to be in a band where nobody cares really about anybody except for the lead singer nobody knows anybody in the band except for the lead singer I wouldn't if I hadn't been into them before this and obviously because I take my time to look into the band's back catalog and that sort of thing in their history but how boring could it be so it has to be the money it's what's keeping everybody around. It's what's adding new members to this brand. And yes, I did just call that a brand because at this point, it's a brand. Let's be honest. It's not a band. And speaking of brands, Adam Levine, uh, you've got kind of a weird past on your hands. I mean, besides all the women's stuff and all the weird talk, you go to yoga because, you know, a lot of women there are fuckable and that sort of thing. We remember the quotes. We can dig them up. But that's not what we're talking about today. Yeah, besides that, you know, obviously you've got some creepy songs like Animals where you talk about quite literally preying on somebody because you're going to hunt them down like animals. It's a weird song. How did we let that go top ten in America? 
But what I want to talk about is the fact that he said to USA Today in 2012 that he thought it was vomit worthy. The fact that celebrities would attach their name to a fragrance and just put it out there. I don't know if he was trying to be humorous because a year later he's got his own fragrance out there for women. To recap everything I just said, they're squandering their potential in exchange for cash. I know that there are talented songwriters and musicians under all of those layers. They're always adding members to the band, yet it never seems like they're doing anything. They follow every trend possible just to be as commercially viable as possible because they want the numbers, they want the charts, they want the hits. Adam Levine is kind of a weird and egotistical dude, and it plays out in some very interesting ways, especially whenever it comes to co-writing and just putting whatever else he can out into the world just to make him a little bit more money. Anyways, that's it for this episode of Problems I Have with Maroon 5 and I guess also Adam Levine. Let me know what you think about the band and brand in the comment section down below. Love them, hate them, still trying to hang on to a shred of hope, or maybe you just think you're done with them at this point. And to me personally, I feel like I'm mostly done. I mean, I'm obviously going to continue checking out their releases because I'm a music critic, and that's what I do. You guys love seeing me tear apart some of their new albums, and like I said, if you want to see my review of the new one, it'll be in the outro card in just a second. If you're able to, please support me on Patreon. It helps videos like this keep coming on a monthly basis, not only on this channel, but my main channel, ARTV, as well. Thank you to everybody who already supports over there. You can go directly to my Patreon by tapping that annotation in the corner. Make sure you subscribe, because friends don't let friends go unsubscribed, and if you would like to see another problems I have with, you can see it right here. My Red Pill Blues review is right over here, Maroon 5, and all of my socials are linked in the description. I'll see you very soon right here on Beyond AR TV.